Hello, can you hear me? Hello, yes. Uh, Shi Liang, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. We are ready for the next next session. Okay. Okay. So this yes. this session we 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 have our uh, online co-chair, um, Professor. Uh, please help to host this session. I will help the. Okay. Okay, uh, thanks, Professor Shi Liang. So uh, let's get straight to it. Okay, so this is CODES and IEEE-S session number five. So it's about emerging embedded memories and storage. So what we'll be having for excellent presentation, including one best paper nomination. Okay, uh, this is Ming Chang Yang from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. So uh, I'm very honored to be part of it and uh, to co-host this session with Professor Shi Liang as our local session chair. So feel free to uh, pose any question in the chat room. So I, I, will, I will keep an eye on, on, on it. Okay, so uh, let's just get started. Uh, our first speaker uh, is Professor uh, Jun Bong Wu, okay, from the National Yangming Jiao Tong University. Uh, he, Professor Wu received his uh, PhD degree uh, from National Taiwan University in 2021. And uh, after his graduation, he uh, worked as a postdoc scholar at Harvard University. Professor Wu's uh, research interests include memory storage systems, operating system, processing in memory, and uh, the next generation memory storage and architecture designs. So that's welcome uh, Professor Wu for the first presentation. Thanks. Thanks for Professor Young's introductions. Hi everyone, this is Jim Feng Wu. Let me first share my screen. Is a share screen works? It works? Yes. Okay. So hi everyone, my name is Jim Feng Wu. I'm an assistant professor at National Yangming Jiao Tong University. Today, we're going to explore the challenge and solution for synchronous page load handling. This is my outline today. I'll briefly introduce the difference between synchronous and asynchronous page load handling, and we'll point out the challenge of the synchronous page load handling. Next, to deal with these challenges, we will introduce our adaptive synchronous page load handler, or ASPF for short and we'll present some evaluation results to show the effectiveness of our design. Finally, we'll give a conclusion to wrap up this talk. The advance of non-motor memory technology has introduced ultra-low latency storage devices and significantly shrinked the performance gap between the main memory and the storage. The latency of UL device is about three microseconds and the overhead of running content switching while handling patch flow asynchronously is about 5 to 10 microseconds. Due to the fact that the content switching time in handling patch flows is now considered pretty long, your device trigger the reconsideration of handling asynchronous patch flows in a common practice. Intel and IBM suggest to consider handling patch flows in a synchronous way. Let me briefly go through the difference between asynchronous and synchronous patch flow handling. To handle patch flow asynchronously, the operating system will set up DMA to move the patch from your device to DRAM. Then we'll run context switching to get the CPU to other process. In contrast, during running synchronous patch flow handling, CPU will not do context switch, but just busy waiting for the IO completion. Switching from asynchronous to synchronous patch flow handling not only affects the way to handle I.O., but also the way to do process scheduling. For systems adopting asynchronous patch flow handling, process will be rescheduled while running out of its time slice or handling patch flows. On the other hand, for systems using patch, synchronous patch flow handling, process will only be rescheduled while running out of, of their time slice. 
In this example, with adopting synchronous patch for handling, memory intensive task T1 will be scheduled to run again after running other a minus one task. It implies most of patches correlated with T1's working sets are already kicked out by running other process. This will cause the challenge code working set contention. Let me give a quick example to show the cause of the working set contention. Assuming there are four processes, let's say T1 to T4, running on a system using synchronous patch flow handling. T1's working set will be read to DRAM while running T1 as usual. After running T1, working sets belonging to T2, T3, and T4 will be read to DRAM during their executions. Now, if T1 is scheduled to run, again, the system might spend lots of time to reconstruct T1's working set. This is because T1's working set is kicked out while running T2, T3, and T4. This issue is called working set contention. We run an experiment evaluation by using synchronous and synchronous patch for handling on the same data sets respectively. We arrange two takeaways from our evaluation results. First, using a synchronous patch for handler shows relative stable results in terms of the number of patch folds. The reason is that the most frequently used patches between to each process can be kept in memory device. On the other hand, if the system adopts the synchronous patch for handler, the number of patch folds fluctuates severely over time. The peak is caused when processes are just scheduled to run where most of their working sets are kicked out, kicked out from memory device due to the working set contention. Their working sets can be reconstructed after running for a while, and then the number of occurrence patch flows will drop significantly. This observation motivates us to come up with a new demand patching strategy to deal with the working set contention issue so as to remove the peak of patch flows and reduce the occurrence of patch flows. We propose an adaptive synchronous patch flow handler to deal with the working set contention issue. First, while handling a patch flow, our handler runs the immediate synchronous patch prefetching design to decide a few to be fetched patches by considering patch access behaviors. Second, when the process uses up all its time slides, our handler will run the adaptive memory demand CPU scheduling design to work with the CPU scheduler to schedule the next process by considering both memory demands and the fairness of CPU occupation. Third, if the running process is non-memory intensive, our handler runs the synchronous patch prefetching design to notify the DMA to prefetch the working set belonging to the next to be run memory intensive process. Due to the time limitation, I will only point out some main design concepts for each design. Please refer to our papers if you are interested in. The rationale behind the immediate synchronous patch prefetching design is that patches causing faults in a close time period may probably be evicted together and then raise patch faults together the next time. We design a fault aware prefetch set to mark the patch by suitable set IDs. Assuming patch A and B access sequentially, there are three cases. First, both patches do not belong to any set, then allocate a new and same set to LAM. Second, one of LAM is belonging to a set, then add the other one to the same set. Third, they both are in different sets, then there is no change to LAM. For our second design, a key concept of the adaptive CPU scheduling design is to avoid scheduling two memory intensive processes continuously. We prioritize and run 
non-memory intensive process before running a memory intensive process. For example, if H and I are both memory intensive process, then they will not be run sequentially after our adjustment. For example, memory intensive process I will be first put in a temporary queue and will schedule a non-memory intensive task first, just like A in this example. To alleviate the penalty of delaying process I, our design will allocate more time slides to those delayed process. <clears throat> our third design aims to reconstruct memory intensive process working set. The rationale behind this design is that now memory intensive process do not need to handle patch flows too often. And thus, idle bus can be used for preloading or reconstructing the working set belonging to the next memory intensive process. We will maintain a reconstruct list for each memory intensive process. Pages will be inserted into the list when the correlated access bit is set. Our design will reconstruct the first end pages in the reconstruct list. <clears throat> For the evaluation, we run our trace-based simulator on four mixed workloads. We compare the proposed ASPF star and ASPF with the baseline synchronous page for handling the virtual prefetching solution and also the aggressive virtual prefetching solution. Results show that compared with the baseline, our ASPF star and ASPF can save 12% and 9% of the total execution time. This performance saving is because our solution can minimize the frequency of accessing your device. To wrap up, process suffer from the working set contention issue while running on systems using synchronous patch for handling. To deal with this issue, we propose an adaptive synchronous patch for handler to adjust scheduler, prefetch, and reconstruct the working set. The evaluation results show that our design can effectively reduce the overall execution time compared with the baseline and a state of the art virtual prefetching strategy. Thanks for joining this talk. Okay, so thanks for the nice presentation from Professor Wu. Uh, <laughs> Professor Zhiliang, do we have any questions from the floor that presents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, so I have a question, but I have questions from online. Uh, oh, not that I'll ask. Yeah, I also have a question. Yeah, online first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yes. in the prefetch, in the, during the prefetching of pages, do you use aggressive prefetching or adaptive prefetching? And if you use aggressive prefetching, then how do you handle the bandwidth contention? Uh, arising from the prefetching of pages? Actually, we use adaptive and we do not use aggressive prefetching. It is because aggressive prefetching will use up too much of bandwidth and we found that if we maintain a great data structure to keep track of the process behaviors, then we do not really need to move too much of pages in DRAM. So actually, we will move just like <clears throat> four to eight pages in our design. But the details we, we do not present in this talk, we just put in our papers. Okay, uh, one more question is that, how, do you handle parallel workloads? And in those uh, workloads, are the shared pages between multiple threads brought once or multiple copies are created for each for different threads? Actually, we do not consider a shared patch in this, in this work and we're now thinking about to include more real operating system designs in our future works. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we also have a question from, from the physical event. Yeah, hi, uh, hi, hi, yeah, Ming Kang, yeah. So uh, thank you for the presentation. I, I think it's so very clearly presented. Uh, I, I have a, a number of questions, right? So uh, easy to understand. So you work on synchronous uh, uh, page for handle, and then you deploy a number of techniques like prefetching, 
uh, uh, CPU scheduling uh, 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 techniques, uh, but these techniques uh, have rest mostly established. Uh, they have been used uh, in, in, in other uh, works as well. So could you stress the, the novelty of, of your And also in the comparison, uh, we can see you are comparing um, uh, your proposed method to the basic asynchronous uh, page fault handling uh, to how the other uh, works uh, using uh, asynchronous uh, uh, sim sorry, synchronous page, page fault uh, handling. And also for, for these uh, uh, deployed, so what could be the uh, overhead? Or could you make some along this? Thank you. Okay. So first of all, novelty actually, in contrast to all our prior works, I think the most uh, novelty we have is about to cooperate the scheduler and the uh, data prefetching. Let us go, let me go back to the prior few slides to clarify this issue. <clears throat> Actually, the reason why we're going to adjust the CPU scheduling, the key point is like, if without adjusting, if there are two memory intensive process, uh, if there are kind of scheduled one by one, then when process edge is running, then we have no kind of enough memory bus to pre-batch process I, right? Because they are memory intensive, so there will be an intense kind of patch pose occurs there. So what we're going to do is to give more space to our prefetcher because there's lots of prefetching strategy and there are virtual prefetching. There's lots of, and ours is about to kind of maintain a data structure. So it is still a prefetcher. And the key is that when can we trigger the prefetching? So what we're going to do is to reschedule the process and let oh then let all uh, memory intensive process before running then we first run a non-intensive a non-memory intensive process in this case we are able to reconstruct or prefetch some patches during the non-memory intensive process is running so i think this is the key <clears throat> novelty for our technical challenges and <clears throat> in terms of overhead actually because just, just as like the prior question that do we use the aggressive prefetching? And I said, no, because we use a more lightweight solution. And in that case, we can decrease the overhead for designing the data structures. Because if we use kind of uh, an aggressive prefetching, then the overhead will be the data bus kind of movement, right? And if we are going to move fewer patches, then we might have a more complex data structures. And in our paper, we have shortly dis discussed about how overhead <clears throat> our structure is. And it, actually, we we'll only slightly modify some unused bits provided in uh, Linux kernel. So we think like the overhead might not be too high here. Oh, all right, thank you. Uh, just a follow up question. So uh, I, I saw a figure. Comparing the, uh, in, in the in the beginning, right? Comparing uh, synchronous page for handling with your worker and asynchronous, right? and then the synchronous one, uh, there is a there are some peaks, right? The, but the peak is always higher than the average of asynchronous one. Um, uh, so I'm just wondering, like, how this is? Could you comment on that? Hmm. Sorry, you you mean the peak of the synchronous is? Uh, or the synchronous peak is always higher than the synchronous peak? Yeah, so if you look at the, the peaks, right? Um, so it's right. the difference is, doesn't seem to be very much. Like how severe it is. It could be severe uh, even with a small difference. I, I'm not sure, I'm just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> actually so this, this figure is going to show like, <clears throat> If we use synchronous kind of patch for handling, then the great thing is like each process can use up all their time slice, right? Because if the time slice now in our CFS, for example, for each process, we can get around um, maybe one microseconds here or even fewer, but let's say one microsecond. Then for a synchronous patch for handling, if there's some uh, memory intensive process when they're running, there are lots of patch load, so they will not use up the one millisecond time slice. 
<clears throat> and in this case, the page in the memory, I mean, a working set cannot be, uh, will not be maintained enough for the process when it is running. But if we use synchronous patch for handling, then <clears throat> for each process, it can use up all its time slice. In this case, the working set can be, even there are some patches not in the working set, they can all be put in the memory. It is because that process can run a relative long time than using asynchronous. So this is the reason like the, for most of case, asynchronous patch for handling has has higher peak than the synchronous page for handling. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, very clear, very easy to understand. Thank you. Yeah, like, thank okay. You. Thank you. Yeah, so, so so we have a very, very good discussion, but we are a bit be behind the schedule. So so that's, thanks again, Professor Wu, for the nice presentation. Then we'll move on to the second presentation. So it's about when B3, B plus three meets Skirmian memory. So uh, it will be delivered by Professor Zhen Yichen from the National Central University, Taiwan. And uh, Professor Chen uh, received his PhD from National Tsinghua University. And uh, let's just welcome Professor Chen for, for the presentation. Thanks. Okay, thanks for, uh, thanks for the introduction. And I just share my screen. Okay, so is it okay for my screen to no, share yes. screen? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Hello, I'm Zhen Chen, an assistant professor from the National Central University. And in this talk, I would like to introduce my research work entitled When B plus three meets Skirmian memory, how Skirmian memory affects an indexing scheme. This work proposed a Skirmian friendly indexing scheme to minimize Skirmian creating, destroying, and shifting overheads during no operations, including insertion, deletion, splitting, merge operations. Okay, so in this presentation, I will give a brief introduction to the Skirmian rest track memory architecture and our research motivation first. Then a spread tree indexing scheme is presented in detail. We, we will show a series of experiments to, to reveal the capabilities of a proposed sky tree structure. Finally, concluding remarks are summarized at the end of this talk. Okay, so let's talk about the background, in, uh, background introduction. In a Skirmian race track memory, we can just see this slide. This component, this architecture is an emerging memory technology that has potential to replace different technology as a main memory in computer system. Just like other race track memory technology, Skirmian race track memory is composed of access probes here and shift most component rest track memory buffer space. In this architecture, all big label data are written to a rest track memory, while an access port and shift component can move one bit data to right or left. Because the request bits should be moved to the position of the access ports. The leftmost and the rightmost of the rest track are served one word data space for avoiding Skirmian management. By support of these components, four basic operations are realized on the Skirmian rest track memory. By insertion, bit one and zero can be written to the rest track space. If bit one is written to the memory, the access port generates one Skirmian and injects it to the rest track space 
Conversely, the access port generates nothing and the shift component directly shifts one bit data when a bit zero is written. The deletion operation can generate a current to destroy streaming on the rest track space when the streaming is moved to the position of an access port. The shift operation can shift one bit position to left and to left or right by the shift components. The direction is for reading bit data for from the rest track memory. And in this operation, the access port detects about the read operation. The access port Protect the existence of the schemion to identify bit one data. Okay. When schemion rest track memory is utilized as a main memory, it brings benefits to the B plus three indexing scheme. For example, we can just see this slide. The keys should be copied to other memory address when a new key is inserted into a tree node. However, on the Skirmian rest track memory, the system only operates the insertion to insert the new key to its corresponding positions. And the other keys will, other keys will be automatically shift one position to their correct, correct position in the stored order. Unfortunately, Skirmian rest track memory cause other performance overheads. As shown in this slide, when a key is read from the Skirmian rest track memory, all keys on the rest track should be read out for comparison. Additionally, for a splitting operation in the B plus three design, some Skirmians should be destroyed and regenerate on the other race track space. This overhead makes Skirmian race track memory not friendly for the B plus three indexing scheme. So this work is motivated by this observation and we want to design a Skirmian friendly indexing scheme to minimize the overhead on the Skirmian race track memory. Okay, and in this work, we just proposed a SkyTree solution. The SkyTree solution is to minimize Skirmian shifting, creating, and destroying overheads in the B plus three operations. For achieving our goal, design goal, we just include three components in the SkyTree. The first component we can just see here, a B-level binary search method. This component is to, to minimize the shift overhead during read operations. In this, in this design, we want to shift the rest track memory only once to find the correct, to find the right position for inquiry kit. To avoid destroying overhead, a uh, no best recycler is presented is our second component. This design just keeps the unused skirmian elements in the orchestra space on the rest track for avoiding destroying land after deletion operations. And the last one component is the track best splitting operation. The track best splitting operation we just Puts two sibling external nodes on uh, two physical adjacent rest tracks for avoiding creating and destroying overhead during a splitting operations. Okay, and about our first component, we just show the detail here in this slide. First of all, we just try to optimize the shifting performance when B plus three is conducted on a Skirmian racetrack memory. As shown in this figure, 
we just convert our search key file to its binary form and then just read the first bit of the access box. As the first bit of this example, the search key is zero. Then we can just adjust our upbound information to the seven. This is because the key seven is the last key position with the first bit zero. Next, we just read the second, second bit of the search key. And we can just find the example in this example, the second bit is one. So we just adjust the lower bound information to three. This is because key three is the first key position with the second B1. And so on. So we can just read all bits when we just do the binary level binary search. After all bits are read, we can just find the correct position of the search key on the rest track memory space. Therefore, we can just only shift once, shift the rest track memory once to find the correct position of the search key. And our second component here for avoiding destroying overhead, a no best recycler is proposed. As shown in this figure, this design would convert the delete space into a recycling space. And the recycling space is just used to temporarily hold the unused or the delete schema in this space. If the delete space is next to the neighbor with the recycling site, the to be destroyed schema can be kept in the recycling site for avoiding destroying overhead. This is because the unused schema can be reused when the new keys are inserted into the rest track memory space. So we just integrate the second component into our proposed scheme. And the last component here is the track path splitting operation. The track path splitting operation is to avoid recreating and destroying overhead during a splitting operation. As shown in this figure, we can just see when a node needs to be split, half of a node can be directly moved to the adjacent track without any recreating and destroying overhead. This design is only for the external nodes. This is because external nodes have high frequency to do splitting operations. So we just keep the track based splitting operation is designed for our external nodes to reduce the frequency of the, the to reduce the overhead of the splitting operations. Okay, so to evaluate the capability of our solution, we just do a series of experiments. All experiments are conducted on a different best Sherman simulator. In this experiment, we just focus, put our focus on the some metrics in terms of the energy consumption and IO performance. Because this work is the first research work to discuss the indexing scheme on the Sherman racetrack memory. So we just only compare our solution with a traditional B plus tree indexing structure on the two real world trees, Yahoo Cloud Serving Benchmark and TPCH, these two benchmark for our experiments. Okay, so in the observation of the performance experiment, and our solution can reduce the latency for tree construction by 73% compared with the traditional B plus tree indexing scheme. Moreover, when the track based splitting operation is enabled, we can just see the, the, the here, the figure we just show the sky tree and uh, the sky tree with the track based splitting operation and uh, without the track based splitting operation. When we just enable the track splitting operation, our solution 
can get the uh, improvement by 78% compared with the baseline solution. And we just observe the same trend in the experiments of the energy consumption. Compared with the traditional B plus tree indexing scheme, our solution can, can conserve the energy consumption by 67% to 73%. And this is because SkyTree indexing scheme just reduced the skirmian shifting, creating the deleting overheads during the no operation. Finally, I just give a quick summary of this work. We just proposed a skirmian friendly B plus tree structure for minimize skirmian shifting, creating and destroying overheads over the skirmian rest track memory. And the proposed solution take the benefits of the skirmian rest track memory to construct a B plus tree indexing scheme for key value database system. By the cooperation of our design components, the SkyTree indexing scheme can improve the performance up to 78% compared with the baseline solution. Okay, here is all my presentation and thank you for your listening. And all questions are welcome. Okay, so thanks for the nice and interesting talk from Professor Chen. So uh, because of time, I think we can only take one question for, for this work. So any question from the store, uh, floor or from the audience? Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, any online question? Yes. Any questions from online audience? Okay. So, so uh, I I have one for for Professor Chen. So, so I, I'm just curious because uh, uh, based on my understanding, a rest track memory uh, its track size could not be very large. So in practice, we may need to consider like the multi-track architecture uh, in practice. So uh, I'm just wondering, um, how would you uh, how would you comment on this? So if you your design to be uh, to be work on the multi multiple track architecture of restrict skirmian? Yeah, I think this is a good question is it because I think if we want to put our design on a multi-track, uh, just like a large scale multi-track skirmian race track memory, it will be another story. So it's to, I think if we just change the architecture on the lower level, then we just need to rethinking our design on okay. just like the, such architecture. Okay, 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 I, thanks. I will put it to my future work. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, so then let's thanks Professor Chen again for the nice and interesting presentation. Then we move on to our third work. Uh, it's about resolving the reliability issues of open blocks for 3D NAND flash. Uh, our speaker is Professor Chiao Li from Xiamen University. So uh, Professor Li's in research interests, including uh, I think Professor Li is an expert in the area of main flash memory. And also he is, she is working on storage system and computer architecture. So that's welcome Professor Chiao Li for the presentation. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, this is Li Chao from Xiamen University. Uh, in this talk, I will introduce 
uh, work, uh, resolving the reliability issues of open blocks for 3D and flash of and strategies. Sorry. Uh, so I will first introduce some and motivation of this work and uh, we present our characterization of the open block issues and present some new observations on the open block issues. And based on these new observations, we will introduce two strategies to deal with the issues. And then we will present some experimental evaluations. Then we will conclude our work. So nowadays, student and flash is preventing installed systems because of its high performance, high density, and to further increase the storage density and, uh, uh, and capacity, the development trend is to increase the vertical layers in a 3D and flash block. So this brings up in more severe reliability issues. And in this work, we focus on the uh, we focus on the uh, open block issues. Uh, we are the time to complete our block programming as the open time. And in 3D and flash, their open time will be longer because of reasons. The first reason is that uh, is require high high reason to provide high performance. So multiple used at the same time to correct requests. In this case. Uh, it takes a longer time to complete our block programming. So the left figure uh, compared to uh, two channels to uh, the open time of the case of eight channels and eight chips will have very long open time. A second, uh, the fresh pages and fresh blocks continue to increase to increase the storage density. So when the number of pages increased, the open time also uh, will be increased. And the 3D NAND flash, uh, it is normal to have over a thousand pages in a flash block. So this all result in uh, severe open block issues. So we conduct some calculations to uh, characterize uh, the, this reliability issue. So we select 50 blocks in each flash chips and uh, we group into five groups. And group one represents the closed blocks. All the pages will be programmed in, uh, at the same time. So uh, there will be no time interval between two. And the other groups for this, all the groups will, uh, will endure some open time from two hours to uh, 30 hours. So based on this calculation, we present several new observations. Uh, the first observation is that the average standard deviation of the raw bit area on some pages increased with the time of a block. So for example, the first bit page uh, compared to the first blue bar, the closed block, the open time is increased by uh, 35% and over 100% in weight and the standard deviation. Uh, the second deviation is that uh, the reliability degradation of blocks caused by this open block differs in all line locations and the read voltages. For these water lines reside near the first open point. So for this, uh, for this water they suffer from uh, uh, severe degradations than others. And the second, yeah. and for these high rate voltages, uh, they also suffer from more degradation than these low rate voltages. For example, V five to V seven. And the third observation is that the retention loss speeds after the block has completed the program of different partitions, they also are different. So in 3D and flash block, there exists in 
emissions among different layers because of the uh, manufacturing process. Uh, often open for some hours. This variation is enlarged by some. So we can see the scale of the y-axis is very different. And more details about some new observations can be found in the paper because of the timing image. I will summarize our observations as two points. The first is uh, longer open time will uh, cause this uh, more severe reliability degradation. So our first task is to reduce the open time of flash blocks. And second, open time also involves the reliability variations among uh, different layers. So we are more critical to uh, deal with the reliability variations among layers in our open. So we propose two strategies to deal with these two uh, issues. The first is to adaptively allocate uh, the number of actual blocks based uh, on the workloads. So we may have uh, a different number of actual blocks in different planes or different dyes. And the second is to uh, partially rephrase some high border lines. For example, these border lines that reside near the forest point instead of the whole block because they suffer from uh, uh, severe reliability degradations. And other low RBR uh, border lines will be rephrased later. So in this slide, I will use a, an example to uh, present how the active, uh, adaptive active block allocation works. So suppose we uh, need, uh, we need to write a uh, reference to write hard data in plane one, and suppose there are two planes in your die, plane one and plane two, when, when there is no active block for hard data in plane one, we can check if there is a block in plane two. And uh, if yes, we can uh, allocate the data to plan uh, under conditions that no current delay is introduced. So in this case, we delay the uh, point to uh, allocate some new actual blocks. So the open can be reduced. So uh, I will just use a, a simple example to uh, illustrate how it works. Then we, uh, I will introduce uh, experiment evaluations. We conduct our evaluations on a simulator and uh, uh, we implement three uh, block allocation strategies. One actual block per plane, that means uh, both data and code data will be programmed in the same block. And two actual blocks per plane, uh, one for hard data and one for code data, and uh, our proposed adaptive actual block uh, allocation uh, will uh, set a number of actual blocks. <coughs> and, uh, Workload characteristics, and finally, we combine these uh, strategies with partial block reflection. Uh, so, we first compare the open time of uh, fresh block. This first shows the cumulative distribution functions of the open time. So, one AB is open time, of course, because it and all the data will be programmed into one block. And uh, compared to maybe we can reduce the open time uh, uh, the ways and we implement three, uh, we have three implementations of the adaptive allocation with different settings on the threshold to allocate a new active block and they all uh, reduce the open time. Uh, then we present the, the page copies in uh, data refreshing and the garbage collection. Uh, the one has the has the lowest open time, but it has a lot of page copies in garbage collection because both hard data and cold data will be programmed in the same block. Uh, the proposed A B uh, could reduce the page copies in both refreshing and the uh, because uh, the hard data and cold data are still separated just to a different place, and the performance will be not impacted. So finally, I will give a conclusion of this work um, because uh, several things require high parallelism and uh, high density. So the open time is increased. 
we characterize the these issues on um, two types of friendship to these degradations. And we propose two strategies based on these assumptions. And we uh, validate the effectiveness of this method based, based on experiments. Thanks for your attention. I'm ready to take some questions. Okay, so thanks. Uh nice and clear presentation from Professor Lee. So any question from the floor, um, from online or from on site? Okay. I, I, uh, um, since you are studying the, uh, the time in um, each uh, relevant issue, so, so what kind of the uh, chip you are adopting, 3D QC? Or TLC, what is the difference? Uh, so in this work, we yes, we conduct experiments on both TLC and big TLC and QLC, uh, fresh chips. Uh, the the difference, the, uh, the conceptual difference, the, the severity is different. So QLC because they have more pages in your fresh chips over maybe least uh, uh, QLC fresh chip may have. Uh, over 2000 in uh, so it takes a uh, much longer time to program uh, so the reliability uh, issue is more severe and uh, 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 but they also experience the difference between different uh, chips from different vendors but they have these issues okay thank you Okay, thanks. Uh, because of time, we can also take one. So thanks again for Professor Lee's nice presentation. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's move on to our last talk. Sorry for the delay. So uh, it's about workload adaptive over provisioning space allocation for multi-tenant SSDs. So the speakers is uh, Mr. Yu Hongwen. Uh, Mr. Wen is currently pursuing his PhD uh, at Huazhong University of Science and Technology. So uh, he is interested in uh, non-volatile memory, SSD architecture system, multi-tenant storage environments. So that's welcome uh, Mr. Wen for the presentation, thanks. Wait. Mm, uh, hello everyone, I'm Yu Hong Wen from Huazhong Science and Technology. Uh, in this work, I will present the workload to over precision space allocation for multi tenant SSDs. Collaborated with the Alibaba Group uh, with the last development of uh, uh, NAND flash technologies, the complexity and uh, performance of uh, uh, flash based SSDs continue to grow and to meet the uh, multiple tenants simultaneously. Uh, Meanwhile, the uh, multi tenant interfaces have been uh, developed to support uh, sharing a same, same SSD among multiple tenants. Uh, in the SSD, uh, there is a form of flash space that is uh, invisible to the user called the over provisioning space. It can improve the garbage collection efficiency. Uh, reduce the red amplification and uh, enhance the performance and the lifetime of the SSD. Uh, how allocate OPS resource multiple tenants uh, is critical to the performance of the SSD. However, the higher uh, allocation schemes all fail to uh, maximize the performance. Uh, for example, a traditional partition scheme uh, predetermines and uh, allocates OPS resources for uh, each tenant. Uh, the figure shows the uh, overall bandwidth achieved in different uh, different uh, allocations. Uh, we can find that the optimal allocations are variable and hardly predetermined, uh, such as the 20%, 40%, and 90% in three different experiments. Mm. Moreover, uh, an inappropriate uh, allocation results in uh, poor performance. 
such as the 21% of bandwidth between the best and the worst uh, performance in the uh, blue experiments. Uh, in conclusion, the traditional OPS partition scheme cannot adapt to the of workloads. As for the traditional sharing that allows free competition for OPS resources, it leaves wise allocation guiding to maximize performance. Uh, as shown in the figure, uh, the first, uh, the second half of the experiment runs in the partition and the sharing scheme. The um, upper left figure shows the change in the red amplification. The lower figure uh, and the lower left figure shows the PS allocation. Uh, as can be seen from the circle area, the tenant, the tenant with a higher red amplification gets more OPS resources, however, resulting in uh, a 20% loss in the uh, bandwidth and a 28% increase in the garbage collection overhead. Single, uh, allocation schemes all fail to maximize the performance. We propose a new strategy called share to allocate OPS resources in a workload adaptive manner. Uh, it includes two key components for uh, reclaiming and another for allocating. Uh, that is the latest compassion component uh, reclaims underutilized super blocks and the Allocated component analyzes tenant's requirements for more OPS resources and checks the allocation of the reclaimed super blocks. The, the traditional greedy strategy ignores those lazy super blocks containing man, many long lived invalid pages since they have a, since they have a lower. Uh, number of invalid pages than the maximum they are not erased by the garbage collection for a long time, uh, decreasing the space efficiency. Uh, the figure shows the left of all, pay, all flash pages in the super block. The zombie time of a page is the less time from being invalidated to being erased. The cumulative zombie time of all pages, that is the air, that air of the red part in the in the shows how long uh, invalid space has been wasted is uh, inverse and is inversely proportional to the uh, efficiency. Uh, we propose a space efficiency model which both considers the migration overhead as, as possible like a greedy strategy and uh, distinguishes the contribution of each to the efficiency. Mm -hmm. We periodically reclaim lazy with the least efficiency value to avoid the space from being wasted and increase the average space efficiency. The allocation strategy of what we share is to allocate more OPS resources the tenant who can benefit the most from them. We define the benefit as the marginal gain, is the bandwidth improvement brought by increasing in unit OPS resource. Uh, as, can, as, can, as shown in the equations, the bandwidth related to the tenant's weight, uh, read write ratio, and the write amplification. While OPS resources only affect the write amplification, and uh, further, the market um, will be shared alternately runs in two different windows. Uh, in the measure window, as shown in the left figure, uh, a local compaction com strategy is adopted to fairly, uh, to fairly measure the marginal gain of each tenant. A tenant compact its own lazy superblocks and uh, returns at least the superblocks to itself. Note that the compaction of lazy superblocks can improve the space efficiency, uh, which has a similar effect of increasing OPS resources for a valuable space. 
we uh, we record the count of released uh, and uh, it's a uh, and it's a resulting reduction in the red amplification. We approximately we approximately regard their quotient as the value of delta x and uh, calculate the marginal gain for each tenant. After that, in the red figure, uh, what we share globally compacts all the latest superblocks from all tenants, um, allocate the OPS resource of the tenants with the least efficiency value to the tenants with the most marginal gain. Finally, uh, what we share can workload adaptively adjust the OPS allocation and, uh, achieve, and uh, achieve better performance. We implement the proposed work on the trace driver SSC simulation platform and uh, compare it with the traditional partition and sharing scheme with two to eight, two to eight tenants run concurrently. The uh, overall OPS resource account for account for 25% by default. Uh, the workloads are collected by the uh, file system and uh, storage benchmark file, uh, it, uh, including two uh, write intensive workloads and two reading workloads. The performance of Performance of the partition scheme shown in the red box uh, is high depends on the allocation. By contrast, our scheme shown in yellow box uh, can adaptively adjust the OPS allocation and always achieve a better performance as shown in the upper right figure. Uh, our scheme shows up to 40 40.3% improvement in bandwidth and 37% uh, reduction in red amplification compared to the partition scheme. Uh, well, compared to the sharing scheme showing, showing blue, uh, we, we achieve approximately 31.2% higher in bandwidth and 17.5% uh, uh, reduction in uh, red amplification. Note that, uh, as shown in the lower left figure, uh, we will be sure uh, by, by dynamically allocating the exercise of the resources on part of the tenants to others who require more OPS resources, we can improve the performance of the red intensive tenants without decreasing the performance of red intensive tenants. To demonstrate the adaptivity of our scheme, we periodically exchange the work by four concurrent tenants. Uh, the upper and the lower part of the figure are respectively the overall bandwidth comparison and uh, the OPS allocation of our scheme. We can find that the, our scheme can workload adaptively uh, OPS allocation and uh, improve bandwidth by 11%, 14%, and uh, 25% respectively in four stages. Uh, in conclusion, the OPS allocation in multi tenant SSD is important to the performance. Unfortunately, traditional allocation schemes all fail to maximize the basic efficiency and uh, performance. Mm, we propose a new strategy. We propose a new scheme to load adaptively allocate OPS resources among uh, concurrent tenants and uh, use better performance than traditional schemes. That's all. Thank you for the presentation. Okay, so thanks for the clear and nice work from uh, uh, Mr. Wen. So, uh, any questions from the floor? the online audience or the people on site. Okay. Uh, okay. Hello. Uh, in the evaluation part, uh, I've noticed uh, the performance improvement is not so uh, significant. But, uh, for example, the maximum uh, performance improvement is compared to the work piece. 
uh, rock stands, uh, basal keys. So can you describe more details about this and uh, or describe more details about your highlights? Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think the highlight of our uh, job, our job is the uh, uh, is the workload. Uh, as mentioned in the uh, motivations, the traditional the traditional uh, sharing scheme uh, is uh, bad performing. Uh, well, well, the traditional prediction scheme uh, is uh, one of the uh, dynamics and uh, changes of workload characteristics. Uh, it, its performance highly depends on the uh, predefined allocation. Uh, on the one hand, our, uh, our scheme, on the one hand, the uh, optimal allocation uh, is, pre, uh, is hardly predetermined. Uh, on the other hand, uh, our scheme uh, can achieve uh, achieve better performance even compared to the uh, traditional uh, optimal allocation, uh, and uh, we do not need and we do not need uh, manual conditions. Uh, so I think this is uh, the main highlight of our. Uh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, because we already ran out of time, so I would like to thank everyone's joining, and uh, I think we can have more discussion with the authors uh, during online sessions. Okay, so so that's it for for the session five. Thanks. Thank you.